We're sorry, the number you have reached is not in service. Please check the number. We need to look first at the typography, which is quite simply what fonts to use, what are best to use. So let's move along with crafting our book. The popular fonts. The most popular fonts for fiction and non-fiction books are chosen for their readability, classic style and versatility. They often belong to the serif family, as serif fonts are considered easier to read for long texts, particularly in printed format. In fiction, there are a number of fonts. The popular fonts for fiction books are 1. Garamond, a classic serif font that is widely used in literary fiction. Its elegant, old-style design makes it a favourite for novels. 2. Baskerville, another serif font. Baskerville is known for its crisp, clear characteristics and is often used for fiction because of its readability. 3. Georgia. Georgia is a modern serif font designed specifically for screen readability, but also works well in print, making it versatile for fiction. Palatino, which is number four. Palatino has a more modern look compared to some other traditional serif fonts, yet it retains excellent readability for fiction books. Nonfiction, one, Times New Roman. Perhaps one of the most widely used, recognised fonts. Times New Roman is frequently used in non-fiction for its formal and neutral style. Helvetica, a sans serif font known for its clean, straightforward look, often used in more modern or technical non-fiction. 3. Book Antiqua, a serif font similar to Palatino. Book Antiqua is widely used in non-fiction books, particularly in academic and historical texts. Number 4. Caslon, a classic serif font, often used in historical and formal non-fiction works due to its traditional style and clear readability. Number 5. Minion Pro, favoured for its versatility, Minion Pro is often used in non-fiction especially in academic or complex texts, due to its balance of legibility and style. In practice, when setting up your document, you can begin by ensuring that you have the fonts that you're going to use. It's the first thing you do. I strongly recommend using a serif font, not a sans serif font, for body text in print. Most books, newspapers, magazines use serif fonts for body text. It's the traditional choice and still the best choice. On the web, body text can be used in a sans serif or serif font. Sans serif were once preferred for screen text because they rendered better on the lower resolution screens of the past. That's why most graphical user interfaces are built around sans serif fonts. But on today's screens, serif fonts look equally good. Now pair with sans serif. Create visual contrast and hierarchy by pairing serif fonts with already mentioned sans serif fonts. Use the serif typeface of body text and the sans serif for headings and subheadings to improve readability and guide the reader's eye. Although your computer comes loaded with possibly thousands of fonts and Windows uses different fonts than Mac, Affinity Publisher only uses the fonts that are loaded on your computer or iPad already, or that you subsequently load yourself. Try to limit the number of fonts you have loaded in Publisher to only those you use. Now that you have your fonts ready and you've decided that your body text font is what it's going to be, let's begin by creating your document. I'm going to start with a 6x9 inch book. That will be a paperback of around 250 pages. Now, setting your body font. The first thing to do once you've set up the document and created it is to set the base font and I'll show you how to do that momentarily. In this case, I'm going to set the base font to Garamond, 
downloadable from Google Fonts as Cormorant Garamond, and there's the link there if you want to copy that. Let's go ahead and do that now. With your new document open, select the Text Styles panel. Now I've created a document there of seven pages. It's a six by nine book. Don't worry, I'll show you all that shortly. But the first thing I want to do is set the base font. And we do that by selecting the Text Style panel. You can see that across the top there. And that will show you a list of all sorts of things down there, text styles. This document is a 6x9 standard book created in the YouTube video Creating a Standard Size Book in Affinity Publisher Version 2. It's a standalone tutorial uh, based on the information that I'll show you in this video as well. Now this font, Cormorant Garamond, is a Google version of the standard Garamond font and is ideal for our book. Looking at the drop down on the right, you can see that the font style, no style, is selected by default. We want to change that. Select the sandwich stack for base. Then select edit base. Now when you've got the text styles highlighted there, you'll see the top of the list is base. Not the one that's in highlight where it says no subject, but base. You can't highlight base. You can only select the sandwich. And in that, select Edit Base. In the drop down that comes up next, you will see Arial is the default font. Click on the font name and a list of available fonts will come up. From that list, scroll down to Cormorant Garamond that you just installed and select it. Cormorant Garamond is selected. Click OK at the bottom of the box. Your base font in this document is now Cormorant Garamond, not Arial. You can see the list there. Your body text font in this document is now Cormorant Garamond. Select the body text style. Whatever you type now will be Garamond. So let's add our text and see what happens. Your body text font in this document is now Cormorant Garamond. Go back to the Layers panel and select Page 7. That's where I will begin to order flow my text for this exercise. Add a text frame that fills the margins of Page 7. Notice the document is now Cormorant Garamond. Now, Notice now that I've placed the text from a Word file and the text has come in as it was set in the Word document and in Word document it's Corey and you, plain text, which is not what we want, not what we want at all. But we can now change it for the entire document, which is a really simple exercise. Place your cursor in the text anywhere. Go to Select in the toolbar and click Select All. Then open the text style panel and select body. Your entire text will change immediately to Garamond. And anything you type will now be Garamond. You can see there that anything you type will now be Garamond. Still only one layer of course, as there is nothing yet other than the document. In keeping with good design, headings and titles should be sans serif to provide contrast for ease of readability. Pair with sans serif. Create visual contrast and crust and hierarchy by pairing serif fonts with already mentioned sans serif fonts. And a little note on pairing fonts. And you can see there that the top, ver top part of that is sans serif. And what would ostensibly be the body text is serif. Now, so far we've looked at typography, setting the right font for a fiction or non-fiction book, and the fundamentals of setting up a standard book. In the following video, we will build the entire book, including the cover 
and other parts. Let's begin by setting up a book in Affinity Publisher. This is a standard book and you can see I've got a 6 by 9 inch standard novel size set up in uh, that should be my presets. There we go, you can see it up there. Let's go down to the book, there it is. Standard book. Now this is a standard because it's 6 by 9. We're going to default to the master so it will create master pages to begin with. Now the pages, we're going to set up facing pages so there'll be a left and a right page, facing pages. Don't worry about this. If you're printing to KDP or anybody else, they'll want single pages, but you do that in export. Remember that. Don't set up single pages here. It's a real pain. Going to arrange them horizontally, and we're going to start on the right so that page one is on the right. Now, this is standard for any book. If you open a, a decently produced book, it, the chapters start on the right all chapters start on the right and the story starts on the right hand page. That's the recto page, recto verso. You'll come across those terms, I'm sure. I'm going to start with the number of pages a seven. Now, this is, there's a reason for this that you'll see later on because we've got a front cover page, not the cover that goes on the book. That's separate. That's a separate file and you do that separately. This is the in creating the interior of the book. But most printers, including KDP, want that first page to be the same as the cover. So it'll be a title page. And then there's other pages after that. We'll get to it as we get to it. The standard color for books, CMYK, that's what you want. That's standard. Don't do transparent backgrounds. Um, most publishers, including KDP, really hate that. Margins. Now you've got to include the margins. Now there's an inner margin, which is the margin there. The center of the book to the first margin. The outer margin of 0.5 inch is that margin out there. Now both of those margins, you can't see the left page here, but you will. That's the, the left and the right margins. That's the gutter. Your gutter has to be slightly bigger than the outer margin because you've got a fold in the book there, and if you've got many pages, you'll end up cracking the spine of the book to try and read what's in there. You don't want that. Now, standard is 0.76 top margin, 0.76 bottom margin. Depending on how you want your book to look, you can change those. The bleed, now you do want bleed, and that's that outer red line you can see right around it. So you can take your images if you place them on a page right out to that bleed line that way they'll get trimmed off where the dotted line is and you won't have any little white borders now if you haven't got images within your standard book then still leave the bleed there but when you export don't export it with bleed kdp particularly hates bleed on the inside of a book on the interior because it messes with the size. So it's not so much KDP, it's what you want to do. Now, let's continue. We've got everything set up there, ready to go. Let's click Create and see what happens. There we go. Now, there's the master page. Let's click on that. There's the Recto Verso. Right and left, the right page and the left page. Now, it's Master A. Whatever you put on those pages will appear in all those pages. And I can show you that later on. But you will put some things in there, like page numbers, and we'll get to that later. Page one, we can see here. Now, page one, you can clearly see the left-hand border, which is the gutter border, is wider than the outer border, and that's the way it should be. Let's have a look at the double pages. That's page one where it's starting. And there you go. There's the double pages. This would be the start of the story if you were starting there. But we're starting on that page. So that's page one of the story or the title page. Why have we got seven pages? Well, let me show you that.
there's you can, let's look at the master page first. There's still nothing on the master pages. I haven't put the um, page numbers on there. There's page one, and it's a translation of Beowulf. Been in the public domain for about three centuries. There's page two of the document. Page three. Page four. Page 5, I've started a table of contents there. There's another blank page there, which I'll put maybe a dedication or something. That's page 6. Now there's page 7, where I've actually started the story. So you've got page 1, title page. Page 2, um, the credits for the book if there are any, or dedications if there are any. There'll be a copyright notice there perhaps. Um, there'll be something there like a blurb about your business perhaps. A short blurb, people generally won't read it. Table of contents, allow, if it's a really long book and you've got lots of chapters, that's what that second page is for. Allow two pages for your table of contents. They can get quite large if you put lots of table, lots of chapters in your book. You can see there there's only two so far, so there's room for more on that page there. There's page one beginning, and so the story continues. It's unformatted, except I started with a chapter two. There'll be a chapter three down here somewhere. Now that one hasn't been completed yet. And so on down the book. What have we got? We've got 91 pages right to the end there. Now that's completely unformatted that far into the book. So it may end up with more pages, in which case you can add pages and when you're down that far, you can you can see there, you can make sure the text flows out to the next page by using that there. But I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll go back to there. We'll go back to there, to this original one I set up. Now, I'll show you how to do this one, and we're starting with this one. So let's begin this short part of the exercise by looking at how we adjust the master pages. Now these are facing pages, so your master is going to be A and B, but all on one master page. And it's quite simple for a 6x9 straightforward print book. We're not talking about ebooks, we're talking about print books, where you've got a gutter in the middle. Now we've got a number of um, inclusions in this, one of them being the page numbers. Now the standard page number is left and right on the page and you put them just inside the margins. If you put them outside the margins, some of the publishers like KDP for example will complain loudly about material being outside the margins. So don't put material outside the margins and you think, but I'm going to lose half my page. They're just the margins and you haven't yet put in your text boundaries. And within those margins, you've got a page number, which you input by going to text, insert, fields, and page number. You see that? Right there. Now, you can't fill it in because it's already done, but that's okay. Same over there. What you do is you just copy that one and paste it over there, and you've got it in exactly the right place. Now, we want to put in the first seven pages, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Page seven is where the first page of your book, of your story, starts. But here we've got page one. So let's look at page one. Double click on that so it brings it in. Now you can see what I've got here is, I'm just going to bring that down a little bit. 
is a boundary. Now, I'm not going to spend the time of typing things in, but that's where I'm going to put the heading. And the heading, you may have noticed, was this one here. So let's just copy that whole thing. We should be able to get that. Where's my layers panel? Layers, there, Control C. Now let's go back to the other one. Select that, delete it, but what I want to do is paste that in there. Now it's too high, so we bring it down. Otherwise it overwrites that page number. You don't need it right to the bottom of the page because that's all you're putting in there. Now page 2 and page 3. Let's see on the other one, we've got on page 1 and page 2. Page 2 is one of those. So we've got that text frame completely there. So let's go and copy that one. You'll notice that that's not the master, it's the page. So we'll go back to the one we're creating. Which is that one there. Let's just plonk that straight in there. Now we don't want it over the numbers again. See how that's nicely placed there, so we can bring that right down there. You'll notice there's a centre line down the page. That's very handy for centering things. You can put that in yourself. That's showing up there because it's in there as well. Now we've got page three. What have we got on page three of the other one so far? Nothing in page three of the other one. There's a text boundary, a text, a text frame, sorry. So let's copy the text frame. You want a text frame in this because you're going to be putting things in this. This is the front matter of a book. And you know what the front matter is, of course. Now let's go to page four and five. Let's go to page four and five. There's nothing in, in this one except that. Frame text. Go back to page four here. Paste in the frame text. Again, bring it down so it's below the page numbering. Then we go to page five. Page five, we're going to take that one there, that layer there, copy that layer there, go back to page five here. Table of contents, now we want to bring that down so it's below that text frame, so it's inside the margin and below the page number, which is quite all right, that's just what you want. Now we'll take this, this is, copy, this is the table of contents, the actual table of contents. Now that's for the one that I've already created. Now I won't update the table of contents because they will show nothing, because they don't exist. They're just copied straight from the one that does exist. You'll note this one's got all the chapters and pages, and we can update that later. Again, we go to page six, copy page six, paste page six, bring its margin down so it's inside the margins, and page seven, page seven of the other one, of the other document, it's the first page of our text. Let's copy that. Go back here and put that in there. Now it's got text in it and you can see it doesn't go further because there is no further text. So let's just take the text out of that. We don't want that in there. There we 
we go. Now all of the text is gone. Which is just what we want. There's no text in there. So let's just save that so we've got that far. Save. Now the magic happens here. Notice your text frame here is within the boundaries and it's nice and neat and we've got no text in there yet. So now you have your text frames, you're thinking, I've got another 200 pages of this book, how do I get them in there? Well, let me show you how this is done. Uh, once you get the hang of it the first time, it seems so simple after that. Now you'll notice we've got our text frame in here, and this is page 7. This is the last page that we set up of that, that one there. Now I may have skipped over this earlier on, but let's do it with some caution this time. So we've got that page there and you can see the cursors just flicking around up there. Now I'll make sure I've got the move tool selected. Now you've got an arrow there, or a triangle if you like, and a triangle there. These will become very important in a moment. Now what I want to do is put the cursor back in there and I want to place a file. So I'll, Now this is a Word document and I'll have to go and find it. It's in Documents and it's called B-E-O-W-U-L-F Beowulf Paragraphs for Affinity Publisher Tutorial. That's the one we want. So I found the Word document. Let's just open it and there it goes. Now you can see it's first in there and it's just a basic text it's Cormorant Garamond there, but it's not there because what loads in is what's in the Word file. But we'll fix that later. I've already showed you how to fix that. We'll go down here, make sure the arrow is on that little red triangle there, hold the Shift key down, and click on the arrow. Now you'll see over there in the left-hand side, it's put in another 190 pages odd. Go right back up to the top. There we are on page 7. Double click on that to make sure we... Oops. There we go, back to page 7. Now I can go over here, do this again. I've already done this once, but no harm. You can see it's been set to Corey and you, but that's no good. We want to select all, the entire document. We want to go to text styles and set the body text, which we managed before. There we go. Now the whole document is set to Cormorant Garamond. The text has been flowed into the document, starting with page 7. That's really all there is to putting the text in, in bulk. If you're typing, if you've already typed up your book, just flow it straight in there. Now you can do things like adding your um, table of contents, bumping pages along and things like that. Now when you add table of contents or anything like that that's in that area that you already put in, go to the last page that has text on it, select there and you can see it goes down to there. If there's text it will push that down as you add things above it. This will get pushed to the end. So you'll then need to go right to the end these will change to a red colour and you select the very last one and shift click again and it will add extra pages. That's assuming you've added something to it. Now in most cases you will add things in there. You'll have your table of contents there perhaps and there, but there's where you started the text and you can add stuff in from there. You might put an image in there which will push all that text down. So you have to go to the last page and add more pages. And you do that by clicking on the triangle with the shift key. Hold shift, click triangle, adds all the extra pages you need. Couldn't be easier. Okay, let's move right along. We're now going to look at creating a cover for our standard 6x9 inch book. Now the easiest way to do this is to use the KDP and you can see the 
cover up there, the URL for that. You can simply go to there and create your own cover template. Let's go back just a little bit. There we go. KDB Cover Calculator, Amazon.com. Let's go to there. There's the home page. Simple as that. Now, we're going to look at the book type. It's going to be a paperback. We're not worried about hardback at this stage, although you might be. It's the same thing. What we're looking at here is creating the template for the cover. Select the interior type. Mm, black and white interior. Paper type is white paper, not cream. Cream paper is a little bit thicker, but there you go. We're just looking at the standard options here. The reading direction, don't get confused by that. It's left to right. You start on the left and read your way across the page to the right. Well, unless, of course, you come from one of the countries where you read from right to left. Measurement units, let's make life easy and put it in inches. The interior trim size is the book that we've been working on, which is 6 by 9. There we go. Now, this is important, page count. Don't just take a guess, because there is a difference, and I'll show you what that is in a moment. But for the moment, let's just say the book, we've already calculated this, or well, we've already written it, and produced the 6x9 book that we had before, so we know exactly how many pages there are. And in this case, let's just say there's 150 pages. I know what I could do with the... 6 by 9 the one that I did myself was the, the ancient story of Beowulf. Now, I won't even go and look at that because I don't want to know how many pages there are. I think there was 169 or 189, but I'm just going to say 150. That's all we need to worry about at the moment. Calculate the dimensions, and there it goes. It comes up with all your details there. If you want to change that, just make any changes and calculate again. That tells you all the exact details. Now, I'd print that out if I was you, so that you've got a permanent reference. But now what we do is simply download the template. Click on Download, and there it goes. I'm going to put this in Documents. Maybe I could put it in Downloads. Mm, uh, I'll just put it in Documents for the time being. There we go, paperback 6x9, and it says there in the title, 150 pages. Now there's already one there. Is this going to do that? Let's see. Is it going to overwrite it? There we go, paperback 6, number 2. That's all right. So it's the second one. Now, we don't need to look at that anymore, so we can drop that out of the way. And there's our paperbacks there. Paperback 6.2. Now, this is the one that we want. This is the easiest way, and there it is, 150, the PDF. The full title is 6 by 9 by 150. We don't want the PNG one, although actually you could use it, but what I want to do is open this document in Affinity Publisher. Now that's fairly important. Don't try and create the page yourself or the document for the for the cover document. Let's just open this, right click on that, go along there and open it with Affinity Publisher there. Now the DPI is an estimate, the color space is an estimate. We can just leave that there. Favor editable text over fidelity. Well, we don't need to tick that. Just leave all that as it is, and that's what it looks like there. Now, let's open that, and there we go. Paperback, see up the top there, 150 pages, black and white, English, and it's a PDF file. Affinity Publisher loves PDF files. Now, I've already got some other paperbacks up there. There's 189, there's 200. And there's one that was done by somebody else that I was looking at. Now, 
This one here is 150. There's a few things that you need to look at here. The spine width. The number of pages makes a difference when it comes to the spine width. That's that bit there. If you only have 150 pages, your spine width is going to be 0 0.338 of an inch. Let's have a look at a, a cover that's 200. The spine width is 0 0.45, 0 0.338, 0 0.450. Now 189 pages is 0.426. That makes a big difference. Let's have a look at this one. Now you can see here there's a slight overlap between that one and that one. That's based on the page width. One is spine width. One is 0.426. That one If I got them back to front there, is spine width is 0.563. So let's not confuse the issue. Just remember that your spine width, which is that bit there, will change according to the number of pages you have. Now, all the other things being equal, that's the basis of your book cover. Now, how do we use this? The black line is the trim size. There's your 6x9 page. There's your front page. There's your back page. Back, back cover page. The blue dashed line is where the spine folds. So don't have anything in on that fold. Between the white between in the white space there. Same with this one. Don't, you can see my arrow there, don't creep out to that edge there. You'll lose it. Keep everything on the document within that white area. Except down here, leave that blank. Even if you like, put a little rectangle there. That's where your barcode goes. Now, on the front, again, that's your white area. That's the live area, logos, text, essential images in this area. The red area is out of live or the bleed. That red area, when the book is trimmed, when the cover's trimmed, may, you may well lose that. And if you've got the page count wrong, and you can see this here, the difference between that blue line and that Ed blue line there, that's quite a difference in size. You could lose that side of your your page. Okay, let's go back to paperback 150. We'll just use that one for now, and that's where we start to create our page. Now, what you can do in here is remember that this document is a PDF. That's all the pages there. Let's put all those into a group. There we go. That way, when you want to hide them, you can just click on that and hide them. And it gives you a white background. I would always suggest leave that white. Don't go creating a transparent document to put this into. You will never match this document in one you create yourself. It takes for, oh, it takes forever to try and match them. And if it's a transparent background, nine times out of ten, KDP and most other printers will complain long and loudly that you have transparencies in your cover. Leave it as a white background, which is what it creates. Okay, now we're going to put a cover on that. Now, why do you have bleed lines there? And that's out to the edge there. That's where the bleed is. It's that red area right to the edge. That's where you put your image. Now, let's see. Can we place some images here? Place. 
photos. Let's just go to photos. What have we got in here that I can place in there? You'll notice I'm right out at the edge there. That's where I want it. And it's on the fold line. Now that image won't stay there, obviously, because when the book is trimmed, it will trim it off down there. Even if you go like this, Now let's reduce the transparency. You can see where your image is. Don't leave that as 100%. Drop the opacity really quite a long way down. That allows you to see where your images and documents are on your front page. Now we've got the nice image there of possibly Mars or the Moon or somewhere like that. Now let's do something else on here. This is a this is not a very well designed book cover, I might add. But let's just I'm showing you where your where your um, margins are for your boom boom boom. Now okay. That's very hard to get an image there. There's a, there's a bunch of images. That'll do. Open. And we're going to put this image across there. Navigator, let's reduce that so we can see what we're doing there. And bring the navigator over to the center. Now you can see that you're right out to the edge there and right out to the edge there. We'll bring that one down there and put it underneath that one. So that you can still put in here your front cover, your back cover material. Let's go up here and drop down, drop the transparency even further. Now you can see it's looking more like it. Let's put a couple of text frames in there. There's our text frames. They're already in there because I've imported this as a PDF file, but that's not what I want. If you're very game, you can import these templates as the PNG that's there. Let's see what happens when we do that. We'll take that one up there. We'll go up there. File. Import content. Can we import content in this? Documents. Paperback 6. 6.2. That's the one we wanted. There's the PNG file. No, I don't want to import it. So we're going to... It's looking to place it. We can go back to here. To the finder. Open with Affinity Publisher, and there it is, and it's brought it in purely as a background image. That's a PNG file, but that's okay, that's fine, that's what we want, because 
what you've got here is the correct sizes. Now it's locked so we can't move it. We've got to go to the document, document setup, change that from pixels, document we don't want uh, points, we don't want it pixels, we want it inches. Now, it doesn't need to be 600 dpi. That's really too, that's too high. But it doesn't matter, we won't alter it. It's the same document. 150 pages, spine width 0.338. There's our measurements down there. And they're the same as that one. Let's go here and here. We'll copy those, go over to here and place them there. Go to Navigator and reduce the whole thing in size. Down to the edge and We want the whole thing on top. That's what it looks like. There's your background. And the background in this case is the PNG file. Let's reduce that in opacity so that you can see through it. Now what you haven't got here is what you've got here. See this one here already has text frames in there. Now they're not text frames you would use, except for that one perhaps. Let's put push this down here. There's that one there and so forth. But you're, you're unlikely to use them. What you can do is copy them and put them into your one here. But this here, you can see we've started out with a PNG document. That ensures that you have exactly the right size cover. This is what I'm trying to get at here. That's exactly the right size for 150 pages. It's a PDF file and it has those there to start with. Now that's that one there, which is a text frame. You can see that frame text. So that one there, you can put your own, you can put your own text in there. But of course, the cover they've generated here is not going to be the cover you wanted. But that's where it goes. Now, it's really quite straightforward in that What you want here is that text frame in that area. Take those out there, turn that on there. And there's your, there's your original cover document. There it is there. Now we want that one there, the PNG file, because you're going to remove that eventually anyway. But what you can do in here, of course, you want to, you want to put your own title in there. Keep it up to there. You might want to put your own and you can see that that's not terribly efficient but what I'm putting in there and you can see that that's gone the green line down there tells you it's the center of that page as you well know. For the barcode area, 
text file. Now the location and size, it's 2 inches by 1.2 inches. Have we got that there? two inches by 1.2 there you go it's exactly the right size now don't put anything in there because that's where your barcode is going to go doesn't matter what you put there, the KDP barcode will overwrite it. And that's fine, that's what you want. That's inside the boundaries. That's inside the boundaries. Let's just turn that off so it's not um, snapping to the edge. Everything's where it should be. Personally, I wouldn't use, what's that, artistic text? Let me sit on that. Yes, artistic text tool. I personally wouldn't use the artistic text tool because you don't have a lot of control over it. Use text frames and you can put material in there, move it around, put images behind it and things like that. Speaking of images... Now I didn't use text uh, image frames in there, but I should have done because what you can do with image frames is put them in here and then you can change those images. That's right up to the fold line. Now that image will get lost a little bit on that fold line. But you want it out to the edge because you don't want white gaps there. Remember you're going to have something else in the spine, even if it's just that those same colours. Now there's your picture frame. We'll untext that. Copy. and paste it into the picture frame. Turn it on and there it is. You can see it's not overlapping anywhere. Now that's just what you want. If you've got this one here that you're concerned about, then you do another picture frame here and put it in it. Remember you want those picture frames right out to the edge of the bleed line. What did I do with that picture frame I just had? There it is there. Out to the bleed line. Over to the boundary. Down to there. Turn that on. Drag it into the picture frame. and put it above the other one. You can see the original images now are blanked out. But there they are, neatly on the book cover. So you haven't got them spilling over the edge, you've got them exactly where you want. That's the power of picture frames. That there is your text frame. Now you can put text in that. That's where the barcode's going to go. So the barcode will overwrite all that. 
What you can do, of course, is you may be able to take the yellow from this one. Take that, copy it, go back to there. And just put that over there. Now when that prints out, that's where your barcode will be. It'll overwrite that. There's text frame there. There's text frame there. There's an artistic text there which you can move around. Okay, that's about all we need to do. I think you're well on the way now to be able to do your own 6x9 book cover. Remember, put them in picture frames. Don't just drop the images on the page like that one was. Let's get rid of that altogether so it doesn't mess with it. That's there, you can see it's gone. There's the background. There's the frame text. Picture frame, picture frame, frame text. This is my book. Frame text and rectangle. Now, because that rectangle is at the top, let's move it down here a little bit. There we go. Now it's above the images. That frame text there. Where's that frame text? That's that one there. So let's take that up out of there and move it up to there. You can rename these layers, of course. Now this is the power of layers and picture frames. There's your picture frame there. There's your picture frame there. And these all look really nice. If you were very clever, you could merge those, but I want that a distinct line there. That's the back cover of the book, and you can put what you like in here. That's where you put your book blurb. Let's get that because it's on the white background. HSL color wheel. Let's make it a nice readable color. Ooh, let's make sure it's all a nice readable color. There we go, now it's all one colour. Okay, I think we can call that quits. How to create a paperback cover using a KDP template in a few easy steps. Let me reiterate that. Load in your background first. Well, whether you load the PNG or whether you load the um, PDF, it doesn't matter. I generally find it easier to load the PNG file because then you're not tripping over all the other um, text frames and things that it puts in there that you then have to get rid of because they will show through in your document and can be mm, somewhat misleading. But you create your own here. Now when you're finished and everything's lined up and you know all your images, you can see the text is inside that margin inside that bleed line you simply turn it off and when you export your file it won't export that background now when you're going to KDP export with bleed with the interior of the document don't export with bleed unless you've got lots of images that go right to the edge of your page then you'll need to bleed for the cover export with bleed lines and that's in the export um, options not here you're out to the bleed line there already see if you turn that back on ta -da, there's your bleed there the opacity set to 38 so it's very difficult to see it let's make it very clear 
There you go. That's all there is to it. Take it right down to nothing. Just about there. 50. That's that's quite visible. You can see what's happening there. Now you've got to do your spine and your front cover. Because that's the front of the book, remember? Well, I hope you found some benefit in this and I hope you enjoyed it. So let's finish there and I'll see you again in the next video. Because if you subscribe, and I hope you do, please subscribe, click on the subscription and click on the notify button and you'll be notified of when new videos pop up on my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.